so that's the set which we are going to do today so a little gem which we handmade and a couple of the crystals glitter encapsulation and a mirror mine so a little bit of the everything and i have already done this hand and i have left three needles just to show you how i do it step by step so obviously her hands have been sanitized uh, then my next step is to push back the cuticles and then just scratch the surface of the natural needle plate and file the free edge. I'm using 180 grit for a natural needle. And it's actually quite nice because on each needle you will have something different. Because on the pinky you will do like a mixture of the crystals with the glitter and then on the middle finger we will do an ombre with the glitter ring finger gel polish with the mermaid effect on top of it and then the liquid stone inside so i'm just filing the free edge uh, i will be using tips for this set So the needles are a little bit short at some places and I cannot file it anymore. It's so strange like you know doing all the new sets uh, for the clients because no one had the needles so normally we're doing just rebalance and rebalance and now it's all new sets. And then dehydrate with the blue scrap. And we are going to dehydrate with an extra dehydrator and then apply the tips. So let it dry. And then I've got some tips. So I'm just quickly going to pick up the sizes I need. So it's this one, then for this finger will be this one. I kind of know the sizes. Because and the big tip I can give you about the sizes is I hope I pick them right is know the sizes of your hand yeah know the sizes of your hand because then you can easily pick up the client's uh, size so basically she got similar size to me and then I know which size to go for so I don't have to even measure it too much I need to wait for a needle dehydrator to dry on this needle it is dry so I'm just checking this size yes perfect this one up and the other one is going to fit in as well so the tip has those wee pockets and I'm usually cutting it a little bit so this way I find that the tip fit in much better and it's lasting better as well so glue on one side other side <clears throat> and now I'm just going to stick the, this tip in slide click and then press it hold it hold it hold it one two three four five six seven eight <laughs> nine ten i usually count and then start to relaxing so relax it gentle don't go like this because tweaking your hand will pull the tip away okay so this one just the same cut cut one side other side Light, click, one, two, three, four, five, six, and you continue like this. I usually give it a couple seconds extra, just like, you know, I don't want them to catch the ear because this is affecting the lasting time. And I do the same with the large pocket tips, like, uh, as, like I cut them as well. And they're great for a biting nails. So when I'm doing a client with the biting nails, I would use a full well tip, which I will trim. Uh, I find them they last best. Okay, I need to wait a couple seconds for the glue to set. So normally I would do all 10 nails and then once I finish the last one, I can go back and cut this previous one. Um, but because we are doing only on three nails, I just need to wait a couple seconds because if you cut it too soon you could actually you know uh, damage the bonding of the 
glue so I'm cutting just halfway through halfway through halfway through and now we need to shape them into the coffin shape sorry I just there we are <laughs> so coffin shape nice and straight nice and straight and same in here and I'm starting always with filing the free edge One side, other side. Don't file too much in one side because then you find it over filing it. So it's better to jump like this. Then blend the difference. You don't need to do that if you're working with the acrylics because uh, acrylic sticks in even to the shiny surface. I'm always blending the tips because it doesn't take long to be honest. And also this also shows you like how much the coffin shape is changing when the nails are shorter because it was nice coffin when I applied the tips and then once I cut it it become kind of tapered square really um, so that's the way how I always explain to my clients that's for a coffin shape they need to have a certain length otherwise they are not going to look coffin I'm tapering this look to get the coffin shape like um, but normally it is over filing the sides like uh, to do the coffin on the shorter nails so please do explain that to your clients as well for a coffin nails we need a quite a lot of length to make it, it look coffin so I'm just blending this difference and going to the last one Fiona is having pretty stiff hands today. <laughs> so blend the difference. the length you can also go like this as well and yeah we're ready for a gel application just after the cuticle work so I've got my e-file machine and I'm just going to touch those cuticles Actually, these three are pretty nice. The uh, other hand was much worse with the cuticle. I'm not removing them at this stage. Um, checking for shiny places I'm not removing them at this stage because I don't like to remove them before I finish filing uh, I'm kind of filing I don't know I wouldn't call it a draft but I'm kind of filing quick and I find it like but when we filing we also filing the cuticles as well so so I always do them kind of at the end <laughs> now I'm going to use the universal air bond just on the natural nail plate when working with the tips it is important to don't touch the tip with the nail prep products because that's my cause the tips to crack and you know like actually it is funny because I have been doing nails for so many years and normally yes, I use different tips and I never had the cracks but those ones actually do really crack if you put um, the universal air bonder on on them so that's a coffin tips which i got from ebay that is an uk seller and um, they fab like i love their shape and everything but they do actually really crack 
So when I'm always uh, running a training, I teach my students to don't apply the nail prep products or universal albums on the nail uh, on the tip. And I have been doing it always as well. But you know, sometimes when you're working so quick, a little thing might touch it. And it never ever happened with my other tips, the full pocket ones, but it did crack on this tip. So you can see it here, we've got glitter, full color, full color. So for the full color, I have applied just like a nice and thin layer first uh, to get a good adhesion. Cook it in the lamp, so put it inside the lamp. And then we'll start building the, the nail. So we are going to use some nice glitters. And I show you them in here. So I've got some pink, and then I've got lighter pink, and then I've got some white glitter. Okay, I need to wait for the gel to cure. So normally I would work one hand other one, but I thought it will be quick, like kind of quicker tutorial if I will just show you on the three nails. Okay, take the hand. So on this nail, we are going to do the glitter encapsulation. So again, nice and thin layer. And then pick up the scoop to build up a small apex. I don't want my apex to be too big because we still have to put the clear gel over it. And then my, my glitter pots are here. So I'm going pink, then lighter pink. I love glitter encapsulation and the white okay then i take the sponge dab it not too strong because you've got gel which you can squish it <laughs> just so they don't stick out cook it so i can close the spots now If I find the right, <laughs> right lid for them. Yay! And then we can move on and apply the gel on the other nail. So normally I would keep swapping the hands. I don't like to wait like and don't do anything. <laughs> this one has to be a full full nail and so does this one clean my brush as I had a wee glitter bits and pieces on it now Fiona keeps uh, mm -hmm. peeling her fingers up and this is pretty not good because then the gel might run on the places you don't want so I'm building my apex now and because I'm doing on two nails, I'm just more through the middle. And she lifted it up again. Uh, and then I'm doing the same in here. So here I'm not only in the middle because I'm going to cook it straight away. Inside. So when I'm working one hand, other hand, again, depending on the temperatures, I might do one nail, I might do two or three nails. But if I know that some of the nail is not going to be cooked straightforward, I place my gel more to the middle because by the time I finish the next nail, this gel is going to run. So take that always into the consideration. Like that's, that's what makes my job much easier if I kind of plan it ahead. And now we are going to use the Creole. I like to use the Crystal One gel because it's like a water gel. Like it's really watery. So I can apply it all over. Nice and thin layer. So basically with this nice and thin layer, I can remove also the excess and bits and pieces of the glitter, clean my brush, and then pick up the scoop to build up the apex as well. So nice and thin, because we already start building the part of the apex on the previous layer. 
Okay, I need to check the side view. And I love this uh, gel as well because it's like water, as I say, so there is no working through it. You just slap it on and, and it's self-leveling. Okay, check the apex. I might add, cook it. I will add just a tiny bit more on the other two nails, as Fiona likes to break her nails. <laughs> If they too thin, I take it. So just a nice thin layer all over them. And I'm using the fiber gel light rose. Cook it. So that's the one I'm using. And I love this color like this is so nice and natural. Yeah, so I'm just going to cook them and then we can file and shape them. So I want to cook them 60 seconds. And we are going to put some crystals over them as well. Because you guys asked me about the crystals placement uh, too. So I use different type of crystals depending what uh, comes to... Oh, I just go like this. What comes to uh, my mind. So, But this is pretty pretty nice and I will show you how to do this liquid goldstone. Okay, just a couple seconds more and then we can shape the nails and do the cuticle work. <laughs> okay, take it. So I'm using the UV cleanser to remove the inhibition layer from the nails and now we are going to shape them. So nice and straight, nice and straight, kind of same way like we was filing our tips. And then I'm lifting it up, file around the cuticle area, because I want my tip to be nicely blended and smooth it out any imperfection. And that's basically the filing done on this nail. Same in here. Nice and straight, nice and straight. Free edge, check it. So first of all, I kind of need to be sure where I want to file. If I'm unsure, quite often I check my client's hand this way and I can see it better then. So I really want to file this side more. Then lifted it up, remove like a bulk from the side. By removing the bulk from the side we get a really nice shape. Smooth it out. This side still bother still bothers me. Okay, and go to the glitter one. So everything around the cuticle. Also you can see it I'm constantly protecting her fingers. So even if I'm filing pretty quick and, and sometimes I want to file on the cuticles as well because this way I get rid of them. What a difference if you use the e-file or a normal file. I'm not hurting because uh, of the angles of my file. If I would go like this straight into the cuticle I would cut it. Um, so 
I'm working around the cuticles area. And I'm constantly also holding the nail so there is no pressure. So if I wouldn't hold this nail, it would be really sore when I file. So I'm holding it here. I'm protecting the cuticles with my fingers. So this way clients find it at not sore. <laughs> Fiona is laughing now because she knows she keeps her hands so stiff. And you know what, guys, this is really difficult because if the clients keep the hands stiff, like I maybe explain on my fingers, my fingers are pretty crooked, like especially this one, it goes this way. And if I would keep it like this, the, I would apply the tip more this way because that's the way how I hold the finger. If the hand is relaxed, I can play with it and I can find happy medium balance where to place my tip. That's why it is really important um, as well because when we keep the hands like this, the fingers go in really funny positions um, so this is a really important tip for you as well when you're doing a client and um, you want to balance out how to place the tip make their hands nice and relaxed so you can check it rather than keeping them in a funny position and then you just follow those funny positions when when doing the nails okay so I constantly keep checking the shape yeah, and I'm pretty happy with it. I can smooth it out now. So I'm using the buffer again, protect. So if I'm filing really quick, I'm protecting. And then once I have done the quickest filing, I can be more gentle and slow down and work closer to the cuticle. Fiona is usually very good with her hands. I think the only reason why it has been more difficult today is just because she is not used to getting her nails done for so many months. It's crazy, isn't it? For so many months, like... Yeah, crazy. <laughs> Still can't believe it. Okay, I'm just going to clean them. And do a little bit more of the cuticle work so two millimeter cuticle nipper and i love it i'm kind of pushing the cuticle back and now i'm just going to trim it i mean guys only do it if you really experience nail tech So again, she normally doesn't have as bad cuticles, but because they haven't been done for so many months, I've got a little bit more. And as many nail techs, as many different way of doing the things, this is the way I have been doing for the last 10 years, so I'm kind of used to this way. Yeah, so I'm just checking for the last bits and pieces, maybe a little more file here. And now let's finish the snails. So I'm cleaning with the blue scrap and we are going to Apply this beautiful color number 155, sweet side.
actually this one layer looks really good and because we're going to apply the mermaid I might stick it with the one layer now on this one we have to apply it the high shine non white top gel and cool that is fantastic so I love when the things happen I will zoom it in maybe I have overfiled the glitter a little bit so now I need to fix it <laughs> If it does happen that you overfile the glitter, what you do is you just take a top coat, pick up the glitter you have overfiled, touch it in with the top coat, smooth it out with the sponge. And cook it <laughs> so yeah I love when the things happening and if you do overfile quite a lot you might need to bath the top coat uh, again but because I have smoothed it so nice I just apply the top coat and that's it I don't need to do anything else now on the pinky finger I'm applying the base gel and we will do a mixture of the crystals and the glitters because Fiona is also a hairdresser, so if she will be working with the hairs and the bits like that, she might find that it's too catchy. So we are going to do it a solution for her, which is in the middle. I'm just going to apply those crystals. So I just took my brush now and I'm placed them so they don't stick out too much. More to the middle. Okay, cook it again. And then with the top coat, so I've got a tiny bit of the top coat, we are going to sprinkle it with the glitter using the sugar technique and the glitter I'm using is the pixel effect. I take it back. So now I've got some top coat and just in between those crystals and all the way on the sides. So this, um, this will do a few things. The first thing is the sides wouldn't be catchy and they wouldn't stick out as much because we will use glitter. And second thing is just because I'm placing those little drops of the top coat somewhere, I'm lifting up the surface of the needle and then the crystals don't stick out as much. And taking the glitter on the side. Remove the excess, cook it. I take it back again. So it is a flash cures only. And then I'm applying the top coat on this glittery one. And I love glitter encapsulations. Like because we have also put some pink base underneath when she comes back for a rebalance, I don't have to scrape it all the way down. I'm only going to file the glitter off, put it back in. And then we're going to apply some mermaid effect. So I'm using the indigo one. Mm -hmm. Apply that in. And then start rubbing it in. So I take my time rubbing it in. And 
then once I'm happy with it, same like with the chromes. If I would go straight with the top coat over it, it wouldn't last. You have to scratch the free edge. Okay, so scratch the free edge, remove the dust, and then cook it. Okay, and now I can apply top coat over it. So I'm just using the High Shine No Wipe Top Gel. Inside the lamp, give it a cure, and then we can play with the crystal. So let me tidy up this desk quickly. So usually when my client is cooking in a lamp or I have to wait for something, I find that this is the best time to always clean on the desk. So I don't have to big mess. Okay, another couple seconds and then we can start doing the crystals. So I'm just going to scratch the surface of the snail, remove the dust and now we are going to use the base gel to place our crystals. So I'm applying a base gel. And the crystals I want to use is some gold thing. So I'm just placing those gold decoration up. some crystals so I've got one two three so usually what I try to do with the crystals if I'm working with the larger crystals you need some smaller crystals around it just so everything holds nice in place Then I've got another three on the bottom. See, I wouldn't leave those crystals like this. Like, it feels it is unfinished. That's why I'm placing this third one on the bottom. Okay, so this way we've got nice application around the cuticle area. We've got larger stone and we've got three smaller ones, which kind of finishing off the design. We have to cook it to freeze our base. And then on the side we are going to prepare a mixture for our liquid stone. So I'm having my brush and I'm taking the hand, dipping it in the glitter. So I've got glitter with some clear gel in there. And just apply it inside those gold ring or gel. Cook it. And then on top of that, we are going to add even more sparkly gel. So I've got the one which is semi-like in a salon. And in a house, I've got the similar flakes from the Born Pretty. Uh, the Born Pretty are like, I think, 10 times cheaper than this one. Because this pot was like, I think, it's 15 or 20 pound. Uh, so pretty expensive one. And that color is Galaxy, Galaxy one. In a house, like I've got similar ones, so the flakes are in, and I'm just applying them on the top of those glitter ball. Pick up another scope of the clear gel.
and make it a nice round stone from it. So I need to look also on the side. Yeah, and I'm happy with it. So I show you it is not overly too raised, just nice. Cook it. And the cooking is just a uh, couple seconds really flash cure because we have to still fully cure it when we apply the top coat over it. So I take this hand. Now the top coat, I want to add a tiny wee drop of it around the crystals close to the cuticle. But I don't want to go over the crystals. Yeah, I just picked this one and now we are going to apply the top coat over them. So a drop of it just around the crystals. You don't want to go over the crystals, but if you want, you can go over the stone. So that's not a problem to cover the liquid stone. And then nice around it. Nice around it around the crystals and same in here so I do really love those kind of uh, liquid gold crystals because uh, we can create any one we really prefer cook it Clean it and apply the cuticle oil. Also for the Swarovski crystals, I show you what I do as well. So I take this hand back again. So basically you just go like this with the brush until you remove the excess of the glitter and you've got a nice glittery finger. And that's them finished. I show you the picture as well. Thanks guys for watching Glittery Hacks and bye for now.